Hi, it's Nicole Brandon with Hourglass Bride, and welcome to today's program. It is Easter. It is the Passover weekend. It is a sacred time of blessing, of light, of love, of resurrection, of uncovering, of renewing, rebirth. There's so many wonderful, joyous messages and avenues and doorways and windows this weekend just filled with love and light and possibility. We have an incredible lineup of guests for you over the next few weeks. We're continuing on from our Fifty Shades of Grey party with the doctors, the therapists, all of the panel that so extraordinarily has been able to answer all of your questions of the heart, relationships, marriage, sexuality, intimacy, and love. And then as the weeks are going on, as we are getting into the wedding season, we have tips and pointers, the know-how, and really how to have a green wedding, how to have a happy wedding, a stress-free wedding, amazing honeymoon, an amazing first night, and really be able to have that happily ever after. Today we're playing you an encore performance of one of my very favorite guests and certainly one of my favorite people on the planet, Dr. Lise Janelle. And Dr. Lise Janelle shares her conversations with the heart and really how to ask those questions. Does this person love me? If I know that they love me, how can I jump to conclusions? How do you feel safe and secure and trust and really flourish the same way these lilies, the same way these spring flowers are flourishing and opening instead of closing of fear and closing of rage and closing of insecurity and how we stay open in love and passion and relationship and light and romance and scintillation and and scorching heat and all of bliss and euphoria and all these things you've always dreamt about. And so enjoy today's encore performance of Dr. Lise Janelle in Conversations with the Heart. We look forward to having you join us next week for Unlimited Life and, of course, Passionate Living at our very own Sunday's Hourglass Bride here on Bridal Talk Radio. Starting next week as we start into the bridal season, we will also be moving to the 3 o'clock time slot, Pacific time, because so many of you will be in church getting married earlier in the day or attending weddings, and so we are moving into the prime time slot. So we look forward to seeing you next week, wishing you and your family, whatever holiday, whatever faith, a very happy, joyous holiday weekend and a very happy, loving spring. Hi, this is Nicole Brandon with Hourglass Fries, and we welcome you so much to today's show, and we wish a happy Mother's Day to all of you out there who have children, who are mothers, and all of you that are celebrating with your mothers and enjoying this very special day. I know that I took great care and great time to blog and to post some amazing songs, some amazing words of wisdom, and so I hope that you all have an opportunity to follow that. Today's guest is the most appropriate guest that I could possibly think of for Mother's Day and for today's show, and that's Dr. Lise Janelle. And Dr. Lise Janelle is the Center for HeartLiving.com. And she, when you talk about heart and you talk about love and you talk about where does that place come from, where everything is birthed, she is the most extraordinary. I'm so thrilled and this is one of those days that I take as such a gift and such a blessing because I actually know Dr. Janelle and I've had the opportunity to work with her and so many times on the show you hear me say to a guest that I would love to work with them and then I will bring them back and I will tell you my experience and I can tell you firsthand that I have worked with Dr. Janelle and she has literally changed my life. I would not be where I'm at. I would not be the person that I am. I would not have the connection to my body, my soul, and to all of you without her and her extraordinary work. So today is really a magical, magical gift. So Dr. Janelle is a success coach, and we should all be working with her and finding her. She provides practical solutions with powerful techniques to life, to work, and relationships um, by working with the subconscious and the conscious mind. Her clients, are they run the gamut. They range from executives, moms, young adults, entrepreneurs, artists, Olympic athletes, and so many, many celebrities. She is the founder of the Center for Heart Living, which is dedicated to empowering people by connecting them to their core values. 
And we've been talking about months about this core value. Some of you take vows. What are you vowing to do? What is marriage? What is a commitment? What is a relationship? So it's perfect that she's here to tie all those pieces together for us today. Dr. Lisa was a successful chiropractor for over 22 years. I can tell you she's amazing. She is a championship thrower, and I actually had the opportunity to watch the Summer Olympics with her, which was extraordinary, and we watched the rowing, and we cheered together, and just the power and strength and the precision that it takes in rowing, and all of those things are all things that we have inside of us and in our lives, and she'll talk about that as well. She is an author. She is a keynote speaker. She is featured regularly in print, radio, and television, and she is a member of the Exclusive Transformational Leadership Council, which is actually where we met, which unites the top leaders in the field of personal and professional transformation. She speaks openly about her ideas and about her methods and her latest book, Conversations with the Heart. And the first time I held this book, I can tell you just even by the cover, you know there's something special inside. You have this book and it's this connection, you know, Conversation with the Heart. and, And... you right away want to dive in. You want to stop whatever you're doing. You just want to get that information. And as soon as you just start leafing through the pages, something happens in your life because it's so true. It resonates in a different way. And she has such a gift. Um, her book successfully aims at reconnecting you to your heart so you can experience joy, love, and enduring feelings of true success. And that's exactly what we want in marriage and in a relationship. She has an online video program, Brave Beautiful Bride, which will give the bride-to-be newly married tips and secrets and answers to having true success, fulfillment, and a love that will last a lifetime. And it's hysterical. The, The pictures are so funny and they're so relatable. So that is the Brave Beautiful Bride program. So if you're a woman committed to having fun and a fabulous wedding day, if you're looking for love in your relationships and your life to be filled with happiness, fulfillment, and true love, Dr. Lee Janel is really here to tell you that you can have all of that. And it might take a little bit of her help and courage from your heart, but she can step you over that threshold the same way that when you get married, they carry you over the threshold to your new life. That's what she does. She carries you over the threshold to your new life. So if you're really looking for that beauty inside and out, not just on the wedding day, but for the rest of your life, we are so glad you are here with us today. And I'm so excited to welcome today's guest, Dr. Lise Janelle. Lise, welcome. Thank you so much, Nicole, for these beautiful introductions. I'm, I feel really touched and blessed. Thank you so much. Oh, it's such a special honor for me to have you today. And and just like I was saying, you know, on the show before, we've had so many guests for months and months now, and people will come on, and I always will say, you know, I would love to work with you, and then we'll have you back, and I'll report how that went. But I personally have had the opportunity to work with you, and I know individually, if I have never had a chance to thank you for the work you have done with me and the transformation that has happened in my own personal life, you have made such a huge difference in my life, and really, the reason that I can relate to the people I can is really because of you and your extraordinary work. So I'm thrilled that you are with us and thrilled for all of our audience members to be able to find you and to reach out for you. And so uh, so share with me about your Brave Beautiful Bride program. I just love the title. Well, I I wanted to create a program that would help young women and older women who might have been through this before some key points that I gathered along my own personal life and also working with thousands of people in my career that would help them make the right choices to guarantee them the best opportunities for their wedding day, but also for the rest of their uh, relationship and their life. That's good. You know, our audience is consists of such versatility. We have young brides that are just getting married for the very first time and they're very excited and they're stepping into this new world. We have people that have been married three, four, five times that are learning how to communicate and how mm-hmm. to have a very different kind of relationship and one that will last and that happily ever after. We have people that have been married 25 years that are on these calls that are looking to deepen their relationships with their mates. And then we also have people who have lost a spouse you know, to illness or whatever, and they're starting over, and they're learning how to open their heart again. And so with your work, can you help all that range of people? Can everybody find you, and can you help people wherever they're at step into that new place in the relationship of their life? 
Uh, I'm sure everybody, first you need an intense desire. You need to want to live an amazing relationship. That's number one. And number two, you need to be willing to do the work. With those two ingredients, I guarantee you that you can have a great relationship. As human beings, we live our life through three main modes, either our mind, our emotions, or our heart. So the key is to learn to come from the heart. Uh, in December, I was uh, speaking in India at the First World Parliament on Spirituality. It was quite an interesting experience. I got to meet all kinds wow. of young women there. Yeah, that was great. And um, I <laughs> I spoke with this woman who was 33 years old, and when she was 23 years old, they, the, her parents arranged for a marriage. So I thought, that's very interesting. Over there in India, when you get married, they use more of the mind. They use the intellect. They choose from their mind. In Europe, in North America, we use our emotions often. The beauty of them in India is they know they're going to need to work at their relationship. And too often in North America and in Europe, we have the fantasy that they live happily ever after and that nothing needs to be done. And that's so far from the truth. So I believe 100% that our love can deepen every day that we live together every year if we decide to live a consciously loving relationship. But too often we expect that we're going to live happily ever after and we get so distraught when it doesn't match this ideal that we created in our mind that cannot be, that cannot happen, that cannot be true. So the key is to just get a realistic picture of what a relationship is all about and then be able to work towards it. Mm. So I love that. So tell me, how have you helped people like, achieve a lifetime lasting relationship? This month we've brought, you know, talked about it several times. It's my parents' 50th wedding anniversary this month. Wow. And they've just been such an incredible example of love for me. And I spent Mother's Day this morning with my parents and my family. It was so beautiful. And I look at their love and I say, okay, so that's a, a long-lasting, everlasting relationship. And I know that people come to you for the tools and the techniques to do that. And so how do you give that to them? What do you do? Well, I have two parts to the work that I do. One is the conscious part, and the other one is the unconscious part. And we all need to be aware that we have developed a lot of beliefs that come from our childhood when it comes to relationship. Our first intimate relationship that we have is with our mother. On average, it's mom. It can be grandma and other caregiver it could have been father as well but on average most of the time was our mother and our mother was in charge of keeping us happy of keeping us fed safe nurtured playing with us and making sure that we were safe all the time and whether we are a woman or a man subconsciously when we end up in a romantic relationship a part of us is looking for that, is looking for that being outside ourselves that's going to do all of these things for us. And that cannot happen. And that is what leads us to challenges in relationships. So that's, the, that's so, so important to know that. The other thing that's very important to know is every time there's a fight in a relationship, every time there is a crisis in a relationship, is because at that moment one or both partners are afraid that they will not be able to be loved the way they want to be loved and or that they are losing love. Those are the reason why, those are the two big reasons why it does not work. And the other one is having unrealistic expectation of what a marriage is all about. I, I just finished teaching a few weeks ago. I had a seminar. It's called Creating True Love Workshop. And one of my uh, students left and gave this, Testimonial. She says, what I discover is that my happiness is my own responsibility. And I was so pleased because it encapsulates everything that I believe in for a relationship, is that to have a consciously loving relationship is we need to choose the right partner, and that is only one area of our life. So often people come to see me, and if they're not happy in their career or with their weight or with their life or something is not going on with their life or it's not going well, often they have a very long list of what's going on that's not right with their, their mate. Relationship. So, oh, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. So we often look when things are not going well, we want our mate to take the bubble away, the pain away. <laughs> and that never works. 
And then we start having arguments and things don't work out so well, and that's when uh, a relationship gets stressed out and hurt, and people feel disrespected, and those are the bricks that you can build every day of a relationship that sooner or later you end up behind a wall where you can't connect anymore with your mate. So it's very important, and this is, I know some of you are not going to want to hear this because you want to hear the princess (laughs) stories with the beautiful gown and all that, and you ride into the sunset. But, like, it's, it's a tragedy. I have I had a young woman come to see me. I saw her just before her wedding, and she was so excited, perfect-looking guy, handsome. He had a great job. They just bought himself a house, and I didn't see her afterwards. Eight months later, she came back. She was divorcing because she had not oh been ready. Oh, my re- gosh. Exactly, because she had not been ready for the reality of what it means to be married. So this is why I created the Brave Beautiful Bride uh, program, because I wanted to give insights and clues so that you don't get all upset. Remember I said that the reason why we fight is all of a sudden we get scared that we'll never be loved the way we want to be loved, and we have to relax about that in relationships. We have to learn to communicate. We have to learn to be patient, and we need to give space to our spouse. That's such great advice. You know, I remember... Seeing in the, the videos the, the bridal jitters, getting rid of the wedding jitters, and some of the hysterical pictures. And so, is that part of it when people have wedding jitters as they're getting closer to the marriage and they're just they're so nervous about everything from the flowers to the arrangements to the but that nervousness on the seems to take over, and that mm-hmm. stress level is so high. Is that because they're not in their heart, or because they're not mm-hmm. communicating, or they're not? Thank you for saying that. That's exactly what happened. It's so important to to make the difference between our emotions and our heart. For me, the heart is like the sun. And our emotions is like clouds. Like today in Toronto, it's a rainy day. And it would be really easy to believe there is no sun. But if you're on a plane, you can see the sun. Same thing in relationship. When you're getting ready to get married and all kinds of things are coming up, decisions have to be made, you're tired, there's pressure, and then you start focusing into the future, you might get scared. You get into the emotions, and the emotions are the clouds that can cover up your heart, the sun. And don't ever mistake the clouds that they're going to be there forever. That's not what's going to happen. We just have to relax and realize that when I'm stressed out, I'm not in my heart. So it's it's important to take a break sometimes and just breathe in through your nose, through your heart, and start remembering, why am I getting married? Why did I choose this person to get married to? Oh, yes, and remember all the good things that you have together and breathe in and go back to gratitude so you can reconnect with your heart. Because I guarantee you, 10 years from now, the fact that the, the flowers were wilted or that so-and-so was not sitting at the right place, you're not going to remember that. And that's what's important is don't, like, especially if you're a younger bride right now listening to this, younger bride-to-be, is that project yourself in the future 10 years from now. Will this make any difference 10 years from now? Will I still remember this 10 years from now? Probably not. But what you will remember is if in your in your heart and you feel you, your husband or wife-to-be in that in their heart, and you feel the gratitude and the commitment that's necessary to make a relationship work. Mm, that's so beautiful. And you know, one of the things we had Deirdre Haid on, and she was mm-hmm. talking about how to treat your man like a king, and what it means to to take a vow on marriage and the sacredity, you know, of all of that. And I know that we talk about conscious loving, and that you talk about in your book. Conscious loving. And so, what does a consciously loving relationship mean? Well, I cre- I created a definition of love that I think explains it quite well. The simplest way I could ex- explain is: love is wanting the best for our mate while respecting our needs. Wanting the best for our mate while respecting our needs. And what that means is that we need to understand what are the goals of my mate? What is it that they want to accomplish with their life? And then we have to be aware of our own goals. 
And if you imagine each person as a circle, you're a circle and your mate is another circle, imagine those two circles intersecting. So in the middle is what, where the intersection is, is your common values together. And hopefully one of the values that you have is you want to be happy together. It is so very important. <laughs> we don't get married to make each other miserable. <laughs> we get married to bring the best out of each other. And when we can make a commitment to that, life is a lot more fun. Because really, life is going to have ups and downs. Sometimes it's fun to be with you, and sometimes it's not fun to be with you. And some fun, sometimes it's fun to be with your mate, and sometimes it's not fun to be with your mate. And we have to realize there's going to be ups and downs all the time. But if we can face the ups and downs, with the desire to make it more fun, to have a great relationship, then it becomes a different game. You're, you're on the team together, and you're facing life challenges and the ups and the downs that happens to everybody, but with a goal, and the goal is to help each other become the best that they can be, and that's an amazing relationship to have. When you talk about the two circles, I think about the infinity sign and two circles being connected, you know, or the the two wedding bands, and it's such a beautiful image to connect the two circles. Yes, when you can unite yourself together so that you are more powerful together than you would be separate, that that is a beautiful goal to aim your relationship. And for that, I, I have I have a trick that I use with uh, my clients to help them have conscious, loving relationship. Is that whenever they face a challenge, you use the you, me, us. You, you me, us. us. Okay. You could be, for example. Uh, let's say you you made dinner and your mate is not home yet and they're late. And 45 minutes late, and you've made the table, you're ready, you've had flowers, the wine, you've been waiting, and they haven't called, and they arrive home late, and now you're furious. <laughs> because why? Because at that moment you feel like they don't love me, they don't appreciate me, and you're starting to feel, remember as what I said, the reason why we have a fight in relationships is because we feel we'll never be loved the way we want to be loved, or yeah. we are losing love. So at that moment, it's really easy to go into all these emotions. and We need to take a deep breath and go into our heart. And remember, and that's the other trick that I use that's very important in a, in a relationship. Since my mate loves me, what's another reason why this is happening? So if I can leave you with one trick that's very powerful is whenever you face a situation, you, ask, you say to yourself, since my mate loves me, what's another reason why this is happening? Well, it could be happening because they're stuck at work or they got stuck in their traffic or whatever happens. So you take a deep breath, and then when they arrive, you let them time to sit. You don't attack. <laughs> and you can talk, and after everything is done, you can go into the you. And you can say, you know, honey, I understand you're working hard and you're doing part, partly the work that you do so that we can have a good life together. And I really appreciate that you're putting effort into your career so we can be secure financially and me from my point of view is that when I took all the time and the love I had to get ready and I didn't even get a phone call I, I get I get hurt I get insecure I feel that maybe you don't love me as much as I do I know it could be my own thing but this is how I feel so what can we do so that you feel your needs are met and my needs are met so and the us part is so we can have fun and a great relationship together. Because in that situation, mm -hmm. you can see it's not like I'm more important than you or you're more important than me. It's about both people in the relationship being important what and involving advice. people. Pardon me? That's such great advice. It truly I, is. I've helped so many couples with that trick. It's, it's not complicated, and it helps to be assertive. Because in a relationship, we can be passive, which is always leads us to be aggressive, or we can be assertive. And if we use the circles, again, if I imagine your circle, you're made as a circle. If you put both circles on top of each other, that means one person is giving up on who they are to be in that relationship. They're being passive. So 
sooner or later it would lead it will I guarantee you lead to the two circles being separate. It's either you're gonna have a fight, somebody's gonna ask for a divorce, or often one person will get sick and one person can die. Why? Because when you're giving up on who you are all the time for the other person, you're stressing yourself up. And when you stress yourself up, it takes a toll on your health. So it's very important. You you do not have a choice. You cannot be passive in a relationship. You have to learn to be assertive. Assertive is respectful. And that, again, would be the two circles intersecting each other. And when we are assertive, we make sure that the other person is just as important as we are. We don't make ourselves more important. We don't make them more important. So the dialogue is very respectful. And, and respect is is so important for a happy relationship. And that's such great advice, not just for you know, young brides or for people that are trying to deepen their relationship, but it's great advice in life, in dealing with yes, business relationships everything. and dealing with our children and dealing with our friends. I mean, that's just such a beautiful tip of how to have a loving relationship with anybody. Yes, I, I really, I, I love this trick. It, it's so many of my, the couples that come to see me have used it and helped their communication. Because then you feel my That's, mate really cares about me. They're including me I in this dialogue. It, it's so so beautiful, and it, just the idea of doing that and, and saying, you know, I know that you love me. You know, my father, when I was growing up, that's how he would reprimand me. My father would say, you know that I love you? And I'd say, yes, and then he would remember what I just did wrong. But it was so great because I always knew that he loved me. And then mm-hmm. the teaching was because he loved me. And he, mm-hmm. you know, didn't want me to get hurt. He didn't, whatever that was. And so, but it always started with that. You know that I love you and here is now the teaching here is now the love and the way that I'm going to raise you, you know, as a child into this beautiful being. And that really changed my life. And so now when people just attack me, I'm like, what what happened? Because my father always uh-huh. said first. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that always was a safe place. So it's such a great way to think about that. And I know that in working with you, you know, myself even personally coming to you with, you know, I have so much going on in my life or you know, when people get married and now they have an additional person, now they have children, now they have in-laws, an additional family. And so mm-hmm. what are the some of the greatest challenges that somebody will face in stepping into a marriage? And then how do you overcome them? What, what do you advise people as they face the challenges ahead? Well, as you just wisely said, there's going to be so many more pieces added. And it's it's very, very important. That's why it's so important not to buy, and they live happily ever after. <laughs> that I like that a, ending, though. I have to tell you, I've <laughs> always liked that ending. <laughs> I love that ending, but not in the way we've been fed the ending, which we don't need to do anything. We just have to ride into the sunset. Because if you want to be healthy, you need to eat well and exercise and sleep and decrease your stress and do all these things. If you want to have money in the bank, you need to work first and have money coming in, and you have to spend it wisely. If you want your house to be clean, even if you're going to close down your house, it would still start to break down because entropy acts on everything. So why is it that relationships will be any different where we don't have to do any work for it? So they live happily ever after, yes, but whenever we understand that <laughs> that, <you. laughs> that that principle of loving another being is wanting the best for them while respecting my needs. So you need some self-awareness. What is it that matters? Because having a consciously loving relationship is great. First, you need to choose the right mate. So I I, I look at life as as a big pie, and there are different pieces to the pie. One is a spiritual life, and one is familial, financial, social, physical, career, um, no, mental, which is knowledge, and also our environment, which is our house and our health. So if you look at all of these environments, you have 24 hours in a day. You cannot pull all, all your happiness in one area of your life, which is your relationship, because that's the biggest 
challenge you're going to encounter. If you think your relationship can make you happy and put all your efforts in there, it's not going to happen because you have so many more facets to your life. And hoping that one being can come and take over and make you happy is not going to happen. So why? Because I, and I like to use the yin and the yang. That's why the logo in my book, Conversation with the Heart, has a heart with, with the yin and the yang inside. Because what happens is that you will have equal support and challenge to your life. And guess what? You, your spouse is going to have support and challenge in their life. So when you get married, you don't get more support than challenge. You get support, double the support, but also double the challenge. And then when you have kids and family members and the people we talked about before, we live our life through our mind, our emotions, our heart, so people's emotions start to come in, it's very important to remember, why am I getting married? Why do I want children? And the reason we get married, the reason we have children, is not so that we'll have more pleasure that, than challenges. It's because we want to love, and love is embracing both sides. When you love someone, you've got to be willing to sacrifice things for them, but you also are, are, need to allow yourself to receive from them. And to be able to use both sides wisely is what makes you a wise parent. The parents that try to support only, they end up weakening their children. A spouse that gives up on who they are for their mate ends up making them ungrateful, not satisfied, or and, and you making yourself miserable, which sooner or later you become angry and resentful and start having fights. So there are so many facets to living a consciously loving relationship, but the first key is through all of these things I just talked about. You just remember, love is wanting the best for another being while respecting my needs. And That's start with the fact that your spouse—if if you start with the fact your spouse loves you—that's why they're marrying you. And your in-laws, they want to love you also. And if you're not feeling, if you're feeling insecure, you start with, "All right, my in-laws want to love me, and I want to love them. So, how can I use the you, me, us in this situation? Always bring it back to the heart." What is the goal of this situation? What is, it, my, what is my ultimate desire to have a consciously loving relationship? So even though right now I feel like snapping, <laughs> I'm going to take a deep breath in because it's not going to help me have my ultimate goal. So these are the part of becoming consciously loving. It's not to let everything we want to come out of our mouth come out. We need to think long term. We need to think about the consequences of what we're saying and what we're doing or not saying, not doing. I love that. Just, I mean, your advice is so amazing, and I, you know, want to segue for just a second to talk about your book. The first time that I was handed your book, Conversation with the Heart, I was telling you know our audience that there was immediately you look at the cover and you're talking about having this incredible the yin and yang and the cover and the heart this incredible cover and you feel in that moment that you've been handed like the key the golden chalice you know there is something different about this book than any other self-help book than any other book on love or relationships that there is some tip some secret some key in this book to change your life and change your relationship and to deepen your love and then as you go through the pages it's just it draws you in in a way that you know really it's so rare to have a book that actually speaks to your heart not just here's an intellectual book but actually is talking to your soul and so you know one i want to know how can we get this book? Because I think that every one of our listeners on the show should have a copy of this book. And then also in the conversation with the heart book, you talk about the stages that couples go through. And I would love you to talk about some of the stages as well for our listeners. So. Um, oh, thank you. I appreciate it because I wrote my I wrote my book sitting in meditation in my heart, making sure that every word I wrote could have an impact on the heart of the reader. So. So thank you for saying that. Um, people can have access to my book. They can get it through Amazon, but the easiest uh, way is through my website. It's fastest, and um, it's www.centerforheartliving.com, and you can have either um, an audio version or you can have the uh, 
the book itself, and you can just order it from there. You can get it from Amazon, and some some of the big bookstores also carry it as well. It's really an incredible book on love and relationships, and coming from that place, you know, you always talk about that you water the roots, not the tree, and really how you water the roots within yourself in order to flourish into this amazing being of love. And um, but I really love the part about the stages of the relationship too. And so I was sort of hoping that you would share a little bit. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's my pleasure because that's part. That's so important, especially if you're a young bride that you've never been married before and you don't know what's going to happen. Because first, there's if I use the two circles again, I can talk, call that the infatuation period, and the infatuation period is when. We think we have found this person that can take all our pain away, this person that will make everything mm-hmm. better. And it works in the beginning because in the beginning we often, it's kind of a normal way of starting a relationship. It's either, like in India, you can have an arranged marriage, which is different. It comes from the mind. But you can either go through a phase of being friends and get to know each other slowly and grow gradually in love that way, or... Most people go through the infatuation phase. We meet, we have the sparks, it's intense, we're so attracted to each other, and we are willing to give up who we are in that moment. And that's so, so dangerous because what happens is sooner or later the person cannot make up for all the other areas of your life. And now you start to feel dissatisfied. Then you start to panic a little bit because all that high you were feeling is starting to go away. Now you start to think that maybe I made a mistake. Maybe now this person is not the person I should be with. And um, if you imagine a wavelength, you have a high and a low, just like a wave would be, and you have a cycle within yourself. You have a high, you have a low. You have a high, you have a low. Well, guess what? Your mate has a high and a low, a high and a low. So usually when we meet, together in the first phase of our relationship we often both are on a high and in that phase we think oh my goodness I have found my soulmate this person we, I start saying something and they can end my sentence they smell so good they do nothing <laughs> wrong it's so amazing even if they fart it smells good in that period of our relationship <laughs> I love who you are so much. Yes. Okay, so they're perfect. Right, they're perfect. So, and and so at that moment, we're so infatuated. But then what happens later on is that sometimes you're in a low and then your mate is in a low is in a high. So now your mate can be there and you can help each other. And then it reverse. There and the low, you're in the high and you put, pull them along. But sometimes a period where you're high and the mate is low, maybe they lose their job or somebody dies or some, they get sick. And also you get, you get stressed out and you start thinking, oh my goodness, maybe I made a mistake. And the most challenging part of a relationship is when both of you are in a low cycle. Then people think, oh, my goodness, I'm not supposed to be in this relationship. This is challenging. And then we go from the two circles being on top of each other to the two circles being apart. And if we are if we are really committed to this, we can use all of this to actually deepen our love, to make sure we have a commitment to each other that's going to make us wiser because we can learn so much from this so that we end up with the two circle intersecting each other. So you can either do, do this consciously right from the beginning to avoid the big highs and the big lows because I guarantee you the higher you go into infatuation, the lower you go into depression afterwards when it doesn't match what you were making this great image of your relationship to be. So to have a balanced perception of a relationship is what's going to allow you to go without being high, very big highs and very big lows, where you will be able to keep your relationship right in the middle, and that's less threatening. But if it happens to you, and right now you're in a big high, I would highly recommend that you pull out a piece of paper and you start looking at which area of my life right now I have been neglecting that I should be focusing on. Because if you start to do this, you're giving yourself a higher chance of not experiencing the lows that come from having the big highs. 
I guarantee you. It, oh. like, love is quiet. Love is quiet. If you have been in a relationship for more than three years, you usually know what love is. It's it's it's. It's not the big highs that we feel in the beginning. It's like loving a sibling, your mother, your father. You love them, and you're not, your mind is not occupied by them all the time. That's the addiction phase of a relationship. When we love, it's quiet. It's right there in the middle. And if you're in the infatuation phase, you feel it usually higher from your heart. You feel it in your chest and in your throat. And it's kind of, the, the energy is kind of excited, kind of moves. When you're in your heart, it's quiet and peaceful. So know that. So the infatuation period, which could be the needy phase of a relationship, will always lead to resentment. So infatuation leads to resentment. So if you've gone through this and you're starting to get scared, it's normal. It's a regular part of any relationship. That's when the commitment to making it work and starting to use the tools, you, me, us, remember, we are there to help each other be more of who we can be. And we commit to unfolding your highest potential and helping your mate bring the best out of them. And I see that often when people come to see me when the mother when a mother is just having a new baby. Often what happens at that moment, the man goes into money-making mode because the father has to take charge of the of the family. He feels responsible financially, and he wants to go make money. And then the woman feels like, oh, my God, my husband, when I need him the most, is working all the time. So it's important not to be the baby, not to want mommy, that, what I was talking about in the relationship in the beginning, where the two circles are on top of each other, where you look to you made to make you fulfilled. And I find... I'm, I'm, I know I'm saying a lot right now, but if a mother gives up who she is constantly for the child and doesn't take the time to replenish herself, then she looks for the maid to take over that burden to make her feel better, and then there's a lot of resentment that happens. That's why it's important to be conscious in a relationship. What are my goals? What are my maid's goals? How can we share common values? allow each other each other to be separate but united and as especially if you're a mother you need to make sure you have time for yourself so that you don't look for your mate to take all the burden away from the pressure of being with a child 24/7 you need to carve time for yourself it is our responsibility to make ourselves happy it is not selfish because if we don't take the time to listen to our heart and make sure that we make our dreams come true. We look for somebody on the outside to make all our dreams come true, and that cannot happen. It's too much pressure. So these are some of the <laughs> the, the things you'll No, I, oh, things. my gosh, this is incredible. I mean, what amazing, amazing, amazing advice, and especially to come from a place where you, you feel safe and that you know that you're loved and that you want to open up to the person and you want to share in a more profound way and you want to be able to find that place that's in us and you don't want to take away the value of your child, your own life, you know, your own commitment and still be able to share a world and not make somebody feel bad for living their life and loving you as on the same side. So I just think it's incredible. It's interesting when we were talking to Deirdre Hayd, I was asking Deirdre about what is a vow and what is commitment and what is the word marriage and all of these ancient words and text. And so my question for you is, what is true love? We always hear people talk about true love. And I know that you talk so much about the heart. Do you talk about true love? Yes. True love for me is is really wanting the best. For our mate, it's first knowing what is, what does my mate want, what are their goals and aspirations, and making sure that I help my mate get their dreams to come true, being unconditionally loving whether they're high or low, and helping them be the best that they can be, and at the same time expecting the same for ourselves, and so having a mate that sees who you are, I have. I have five tips I give to 
for someone who's looking for a life made to have a consciously loving relationship. And you may have this already. Hang on one second. Let me get a pen. Wait, wait. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay, I'm writing these down. <laughs> yes? Okay. <laughs> okay. So, number one, you need number to one. find some someone who's emotionally available. So, someone who actually okay. wants to be with you. Because often I see it. In a relationship, in the beginning, if you're not married right now, you don't have someone right now, these are the things to look for. Someone who wants to be with you, because too often we go for the person who doesn't really want us, and we try to change them into getting to to want us. That doesn't work so well. So we want somebody who is emotionally available and see our essence. So this person sees your, your heart and goes, oh, my goodness, this is so beautiful. I would love to cherish this for the rest of my life. And you see their heart and you feel the same way. So you need to first be emotionally available to each other. Number two is you need to find someone who can be your best friend. If the person you're choosing is a tough person and they're not nice with other person, they don't care about other people, the odds of that person being nicer to you after a few months are very slim. So you want someone you, you can be best friend with. Number three, you want someone who share some similar core values because no matter how much you love each other, for example, let's say you want to travel the world and they want to stay home, that won't be so much fun. If you want to have ten children and they don't want any, if you are spirit, if you have a spiritual life and they they poo poo it all the time, after a while it gets very strenuous. So choose someone who has similar like what's most important in your life. Really make sure that you. You have that. I've learned the hard way. I, I when I got married, my late husband now, but when I got married, I I didn't realize how important it was for me to have someone I can speak with. And my husband had a good heart. He was a good man. He was gorgeous at everything. But my husband did not like speaking. And I realized I was wow. trying to change him all the time into someone who speaks. And it was not because it was with me. He's always been like this all his life. So that was something very, very important for me to discover is that if you don't share the, the the right core values, if the person you want to be with doesn't doesn't share those values, because so often we're so afraid that we're not worthy of love and we'll never be able to find someone to love us, that we're willing to overlook what's most important for us, and that will not work. Because sooner or later we, exa- we end up feeling resentment, and the resentment is truly at ourselves. Because remember I said the reason why we get upset and we have fights in relationships is because we have the feeling that at that moment I will never be able to be loved the way I want to be loved. We are responsible for it because we need to understand what are my core values, what do I want. So that's number three. Number four, I need someone who understands that relationship needs work, like the you, me, us type of thing. We were talking before. Somebody wants to put some energy and effort into making it happen because every relationship is going to have great moments, magical moments, and challenging moments. It's about the commitment to making it work that that matters. That's why parents will often tell you the best thing that ever happens to them is having their children. Why? Because once you have a child, you never, you don't bring it back to the hospital. It's your child for the rest of your life, <laughs> unless unless you had to give him your child away for for adoption, that's a different story. But once you have a child, even when they're going to get stuff, you keep your child. And it's the same thing with a, a loving relationship. There's going to be times when it's tough. And the fifth one is a good sexual connection. But in North America and in Europe, often we go for the fifth one first. We feel the sexual attraction, and then we make we try to make all the other four fit, and it doesn't fit. That's why it's important to come from the heart and not from our emotions. And that's why I like to give those tips, because they actually engage the mind to calm down the emotions so we can listen in our heart and see whether or not we're telling ourselves a story. Because I find the most common mistake we make is, if we've been alone for too long or we're so afraid, like all my girlfriends are getting married or I'm not beautiful enough, I'm not pretty enough, I, I'm overweight, I'm, I, whatever we find is wrong with us, then we settle for the first person that comes by hoping we can change that person into what we want them to be. And that does not work. It is not respectful. 
So make sure that in your heart, the person you want to be with, that you want to marry, is someone you love exactly as they are, that you don't have the need to change them, that you love them just like you want to be loved, because we all, all want to be loved with our warts and all. We want to be loved even when we're being difficult. We want to be loved when we're happy. We want to be loved for every part of our expression of who we are. And we need to be able to give the same to our mate. This is such a, a beautiful list. So to be emotionally available, to have somebody as your best friend, to share similar core values, somebody that understands the relationship, needs work, you're me, you, us. I just love the circle and the good sexual connection. And so to find, to work on this order, to have that kind of relationship or to have any kind of coaching with you. Do you do private coaching as well? And can people contact you? And how do they find you? And how do they, you know, find your products? And how do they get involved in the Brave Beautiful Bride program? And can you share some of all of that? Yes, thank you. Um, Yes, people can. I I do one-on-one for sure. People can contact my office and uh, register for coaching with me. I do uh, via phone and and Skype. Also, do it person in person if people happen to be in Toronto or um, if they live in the Toronto area. I also do workshops, and if people want to organize one, I can. I will gladly show up and uh, teach a workshop. There's the online Brave Beautiful uh, Bride uh, online program that allows you to. Um, it's it's once a week for 12 weeks. And you have six uh, videos in total and four audios. And you have a um, workbook that come with this, an e-book. There's a lot, there's a lot going there. And um, you can have conversation with the heart. Everything is available on my website, which is centerforheartliving.com. Fantastic. And we're so excited. And we'll also have all of your work available on our website as well because we definitely mm-hmm. want to be able to get people to you. And we've also talked about wedding gifts. And if you are a bridesmaid or a maid of honor, what a wonderful gift for your friend who's getting married to be Mm -hmm. able to gift the Brave Beautiful Bride program. And so I think this is much better than dishes, (laughs) much better than, (laughs) because this is gifting somebody an open heart, a way to communicate, a way to make the relationship work, and a way really to have that beautiful life that they've been desiring for. So I just so highly recommend people find you. I know firsthand how wonderful your work is, and I'm just so thrilled that you're available for everybody out there. And then I also wanted to ask you that also in your book, The Conversation with the Heart, you talk about many concepts, your duality and seeing the perfect balance of support Mm -hmm. and challenge. Mm -hmm. And I know that when I was little, my mom had said to me, that, you know, relationships are not 50-50, they're 100-100, that you're 100% authentically of who you are, and sometimes that will look like 50-50, and sometimes that will look like 60-40, and sometimes it'll look like 90-10 or 99-1, and you hope that what you're at two, someone else is at 98% for you, and and whatever that is, that you're constantly just giving from your heart authentically who you are, and so is that basically what you talk about as far as the balance of the support and the challenge? Yes, what you're saying is so beautiful. It's so important. It's to be, it's to feel, and you see it when you give abuse. For for a relationship to thrive, we need to have trust. And to have trust, we need to feel that our mate is fully dedicated to giving themselves into to their relationship, and they feel the same from you. And when I talk about the the yin and the yang, the support and the challenge that happens in a relationship is that, let's say you love your mate and you have an opportunity to do something and you'll need to be away from one of my clients right now. her She just got married last July and all of a sudden her husband is asked to be away from into the States for four months, right after they got married. And so there's challenge right at that moment. But to be able to use this challenge to grow in wisdom, and I like to give the analogy of it's a little, a little bit, it's a little bit corny, but it's the perfect story. It's the story of the butterfly and the cocoon. 
The scientist is, uh, is observing a butterfly coming out of a cocoon, and it's a huge struggle. So the scientist feels sorry for the butterfly, and what he does is he cuts the cocoon open. But by doing this, the poor butterfly didn't have anything to push against, so its wings were too weak, and it could never fly, and it died like this. So in a relationship, you're going to have support and challenges. And if you are wise, you can use both sides to grow more deeply in love with each other. So support and challenge is expected. I, I, I've been teaching since 1992, and I've asked thousands of people the question to raise their hand if they never had challenges in their life. So far, I haven't met anybody. <laughs> I think as human beings, as the human race, we need to face the fact that we are going to face challenges and that life can become a game when we start asking ourselves, how can I use both the support and the challenge to grow more deeply in love? Because I see that all the time. I had a couple come to see me. <laughs> the woman was like three weeks before uh, childbirth, and they were fighting. And they're sitting in front of me. As soon as they sat in front of me, they were like at each other. And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. So then I asked them, so what is, I asked her, I said, so what is it that's going on right now that makes you afraid you won't be able to be loved the way you want to be loved? And then I asked them the same question. And lo and behold, What's really magical, you, you, if you sat with me in a, in a room doing the work, the one-on-one -on -one work that I do, the hair would raise at the back of your head when you would realize that we have attracted our mate in our life because we have similar stories of being unworthy of love. And at that moment, our mate is, is pushing the buttons that makes us believe that we are unworthy. But if we are wise, we're going to stop, take a time out, and use our maid to discover where we got that illusion that we were unworthy. And we're going to heal our heart, and they're going to heal their heart. And therefore, we're going to go deeper into love. So that couple that was at each other's throat for, right when they got to see me, an hour later, they were so much more deeply in love with each other. So don't be afraid of challenges. Challenges happen to everybody, and they have happened since you were born. The, the birth process itself is challenging <laughs> until you last breath. So I think it's time to stop the insanity and stop looking, running away from challenges towards support. And what we need to do is embrace both sides to our advantage so we can grow more deeply in love with ourselves, with our mate, and gain wisdom and have gratitude and be a beacon of light in the world that way. That's such incredible advice. And, and I was just going to ask you for a pearl of wisdom for the couples, and I really think that that's it. I think that being able to accept challenges overcome challenges, see those challenges, like you're saying, to the caterpillar that becomes a butterfly, something to push against, to spread our wings, to go deeper, to become more beautiful as our own hearts expand and as we share them with other people that we love. I think that that's just incredible advice. Whatever. What amazing information from Dr. Elise Janelle. We can just listen to her forever, and I always love having her on the show. And so I hope you enjoyed today's encore performance of Conversations with the Heart. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday here on Bridal Talk Radio on Hourglass Bride is our new time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. And from Dr. Elise Janelle and myself, Nicole Brandon, we are wishing you a very happy Easter, happy Passover, a sacred, beautiful, wonderful, blessed weekend, and may all your happily ever after dreams come true. <laughs>